Hello, investors, and welcome to our session here today. So interesting day unfolding in the market here. Looking at the S&P 500, looks like we pulled back and we're bouncing the upside, but not quite the same thing on the NASDAQ. When you have this kind of volatility, what are some tools that we can use to address that with regards to our trading in general and also with regards to short verticals? Well, we'll be talking about one specific tool in relationship to that here today. But before we get too far along, let's go ahead and pop through our disclosures here. And just remind investors that options carry a high level risk and are not suitable for all investors. The information here is for general informational purposes only and should not be considered an individualized recommendation or endorsement of any particular security chart pattern or investment strategy. And also, for the sake of simplicity, the examples of this presentation do not take into consideration commission and other transaction fees. We do use the paper money software application here. This is for educational purposes only. And we want to remember that successful virtual trading during one time period does not guarantee successful investing of actual funds during a later time period as market conditions do change continuously. Also, just a reminder that short options can be assigned at any time up to expiration, regardless of the in the money amount. And the money option has a higher risk of being assigned early. It's important to keep that in mind because the paper money virtual trading application we use here will not assign a short position early, which is different from what could occur in a real trading account. And we'll discuss the Greeks as they are our, our appropriate to our discussion as we're going along here. Just a little reminder that we have our, our strategy workshops. This one here is completed now. The one in Atlanta got a lot of good uh, feedback on that one. You can look forward to the next one is Scottsdale, April 26th and 27th. And following that here in Seattle, just go to schwab.com forward slash events. And you can register for those. And those are free. Those are no cost. You just need to provide your own transportation there. And uh, they are available to you for free. Well, with that, let's go ahead and get underway. And to do that, I'm going to bring up the Thinkorswim platform here. So we can just jump right in and see what we got going on. Let's start by taking a quick look at the indices. I mentioned a little bit earlier. So here's the S&P 500. Now, a little bit earlier today, we had a green candle here rather than a red candle. But you can see that we opened up higher than, higher than the previous day's close. This is referred to as a bull flag bounce. We feel a little bit better about it, of course, if we had a green candle here rather than red. It was green a little bit earlier. It'll be interesting to see how the day concludes. But overall, higher highs, higher lows, a little bit of a pullback and a bounce there. And here's the NASDAQ. Not so much of a bounce on the NASDAQ. We did start up here a little bit higher, but then we pulled down here and basically gone down below yesterday's low. We come over and take a look at the Russell. Russell's a little bit more on the positive side. This is the small cap index. This is a more of a clean bull, bull flag bounce. We have the movement to the upside, the pullback, and now we're bouncing and moving back up here to the upside. One of the one of the measurements that some traders will use will be to look at a close above the high of the low day. We don't quite have that here because there's our low day and there's the high. We're not quite there to that point here yet today, but clearly we do have a bounce for moving to the upside. And these types of volatile conditions are some great tools that we have available to us. And what I'd like to do today is discuss Bollinger Bands in relationship to trading short verticals. So let's come back. And Let's see, you want to go there? We are right here. So here we have some Bollinger Bands. Let's first of all, before we discuss the bands, let's find a couple of potential stocks here. I'm going to get these guys out of our way here. Potential stocks here with, from a trading standpoint, and we'll do what we've usually done in the past, and is to bring up our $1 wide liquid watch list over here. This is a watch list that we've built. You know, rather than run scans and, and look for stocks that have certain characteristics with regards uh, to premiums and the like, you know, one of the challenges with scans, it does, it's difficult to check for option liquidity, particularly as it relates to slippage between the bid and the ask price. That's why we've done... A, a different type of a scan to develop just a watch list and going in and looking at each individual stock and checking the slippage on those stocks and also get representation from all the major sectors. Now, I'm often asked, hey, Ken, can you share this watch list? Actually, if you look at the bottom of your YouTube window and you look over in the right hand corner, there's a little, there's a little, um, excuse me, if you look at the bottom of your YouTube window down below it, there's a little description. And part of that description, you'll see the word more. When you click on more, it opens up a more detailed description. You'll see links in there. There is a link for this watch list, but more importantly, there's a link called How to Build an Option Traders Watch List. That's to the session that we did where we put the, where, where we put this watch list together. And I'd encourage you, if you haven't done so already, to view that session so that you can put together your own watch list and put in some of the, some of the own unique characteristics that you'd be looking at with regards to individual stocks. But generally speaking, 
We have good representation here from all the sectors. The stocks tend to have good liquidity from a slippage standpoint. We do want to keep in mind that slippage will widen out and contract depending on market conditions and also conditions with the individual company. And with our watch list over here, we, as we've done in the past, we, we have added an implied volatility column and we've sorted by that implied volatility column. And the reason for that is because the higher the levels of implied volatility, usually, uh, the, usually the, more, the more expensive the premiums are. And, if, and, and with regards to short verticals, the driving force behind a short vertical is selling premium. So we'd like to sell those higher price premiums. It tends to put us in a better position to receive a higher return on risk. However, we also want to keep in mind that the higher the level of implied volatility, the higher the expected volatility on the stock. So in order to kind of avoid the, uh, the most volatile stocks, we've opted to pass on the top 10 of implied volatility and then look below that. So we come up here, it looks like Tesla is the highest level of implied volatility. I'm just going to come down here, one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it starts down here. So right after, so right after Uber, this Uber, Uber would possibly be the first one here. Come down, I'm just going to come down here and look at a couple here, Meta and Airbnb. Let's 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 look at let's look at Airbnb. I think I think Airbnb might be a good example, particularly as it relates to Bollinger Bands. We're going to be looking at. I'm going to bring up a little drawing tool here as we're discussing these. So you can see on my chart, I've got these bands here that are, that are running on both sides of the, of the security. These bands are just a representation of what's called the normal distribution of prices. Those of you that are familiar with statistics are probably familiar with the, with the, normal, dis, with, with the normal distribution of data and all the Bollinger Bands is, it's basically that normal distribution put on its side and moving along with the price of the underlying security. And the center line here of the Bollinger Bands, that would be representative of the center of the normal distribution. And from a, you know, we don't, we, we, we don't need to be experts in, in statistics in order to use it. Just kind of keep in mind that the price from a statistical standpoint, if it goes outside of the bands, that's only supposed to happen about, about, about three to 5% of the time, either, either outside of the upside or the downside, however, if a stock is in a very strong trend, it can it can move up and bang up against that upper band, or if it's in a low, if it's in a bearish trend, can bang up against lower band over a considered period of time. But a couple of key characteristics to keep in mind: the bands. One one is to look for a Bollinger squeeze, and from the standpoint of a short vertical trader, if you've got a Bollinger squeeze, and a Bollinger squeeze occurs when the bands roll over and start to and start to move towards each other rather than widening out. That basically means what's going on with regards to the underlying security is the price data is becoming more compact. And typically what follows a Bollinger squeeze is a breakout. And if you have an uptrending stock and you have a Bollinger squeeze, the expectation is for the breakout to occur to the upside. So we've got Airbnb here and you can notice the bands right here if we're looking at them. Notice what the bands are doing here. The bands are starting to move towards each other. A little bit more defined here with regards to the lower band, but we're moving up here and we're moving down here. This is this would be considered like the early stages of a Bollinger squeeze. So from a from a trader's perspective, if we're seeing a Bollinger squeeze occur and we're looking at doing a short vertical, that may be that 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 may be an ideal time to enter in a short a, a short vertical going in the direction of the current trend, anticipating that that breakout is going to continue in the direction of the existing trend. I'm going to go ahead and take our drawings off here for just a second then. And, and we'll look at this so, so, we, so we can see that we can see we have the Bollinger squeeze. We can also see if we look at A, B and B that it's recently broken above this resistance level right here. You can see it came up here. It was banging up against this level here. It broke out and now it's coming down and testing that resistance level as a support level. What I want to do here is I want to start off by drawing a, a price line. I'm going to bring it right across this resistance level right here. There it is right there. And you can see we came up here, we hit it one, two, three, four, five, six days, pulled down them, and then we, were, then we were able to break above it. But now we've come down here and we're testing that old resistance as a potential support level. Now, one of the one of the potential advantages of entering a trade here. So, first of all, we have the Bollinger Bollinger bands that are giving us a Bollinger squeeze, which can be advantageous. We do want to keep in mind, though, that when you do have a Bollinger squeeze, the the breakout doesn't always occur in the direction of the trend. 
It can occur in the opposite direction, but the assumption is that the trend will continue and, and it will break out with regards to the current direction of the trend. But again, we don't know that that will happen, okay? But we do know that we broke above this resistance level, we're coming back and testing it. Now, one possible advantage of entering the trade now is because we're sitting right on that theoretical support level. Remember that old resistance is theoretical support because we're sitting right on that support level. If we do a short put vertical right now, and a short put vertical would be the would be the short vertical of choice because it's bullish. If we did the vertical right now, we'd be able to get further down below the support level than if we waited till we actually got a bounce off of that, or if we waited until we actually had, had the breakout in relationship to the Bollinger squeeze. Now, the risk related to that is we don't know if we're going to start. We don't know if we're going to stop here. We could continue to move down. And for that reason, we may want to look at some secondary levels in relationship to where we would like to have our short strike price. I'm going to do that with regards to secondary levels. We've, we've done a fair amount in here with regards to, to, um, Fib, to, with regards to Fibonacci retracements. Let's see. Let's, I'm going to go ahead and I'm, I'm going to look at this run right here. Notice we came down here. Here's a fair amount of volatility. But I'm looking at this as kind of the most recent run where we started out here as a bottom. We kept up here at the top, then we pulled down. I'm going to put some fib lines on here. I'm going to come over here and we'll start right there at that resistance level. And I'm going to come down right here to the low point right there. Let's see, right there. Okay. I'm going to cap it off. So notice. Notice, notice, notice that we have this Fibonacci level that is at the 78.6. So that's 78.6% of the weight of the top right here is sitting right here at 162.09. It's also interesting that it tends to match up with this support level right here. So if we could do a short put vertical, number one would like, number one, we definitely want to be below the 166.85. That's our theoretical support level. But if we break down below that, then we'd like to be down below this level at 162.09. Now, another characteristic with regards to Bollinger Bands is the center part of those bands. This is basically a moving average line that tends to act as a support level with regards to with regards to uptrending stocks and a resistance level with regards to downtrending stocks. You can see we came down here and we hit it here. We came up here. We didn't quite get all the way down to it here. And then we bounced up here. So we've also got this moving average line that's sitting here at about 163.80. We have this at 162.09. How far down can we get here with regards to a short put vertical and follow some of the metrics that we've typically had in here? Those metrics being, we would like to have a probability of success of either equal to or above 70%. We would also like to have a return of, a, of at least 1% for each day that we're in the trade. So looking at it from that standpoint, let's go ahead. I'm going to collapse our left-hand side right here and bring up our trade tab for Airbnb. And in here, we've typically gone out somewhere in the neighborhood of 23 to 30 days. Let's go with 23 days. That way we don't have to forecast so long. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to take this guy off of here from a previous little discussion I had there. So here we have Airbnb and here we have our, our option list. And, and you can see here that and you, and you can see here that the slippage here isn't too bad for a stock that's 166. Now, when I say isn't too bad, I'm playing the part of the investor that's okay with a slippage of about 10 cents for, for about 10 cents for each $100 of the, of the price of stock. This is about 160 bucks or maybe about 15 cents. Looking here at 233 to 238, that's basically a nickel, okay? And that is the, that's pretty close to that the money. This, this one here, the 165, I believe that one's gonna be closer to that the money. That's, that's 405 to 420, so there's 15 cents right there. So we're going to play the part of the investor that's okay with that with that amount of slippage. Now, if you want your slippage to be tighter than that, that's fine. You would go ahead and pass on that, and that's okay. If you're okay with wider slippage, and then then that's okay as well. the 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 important thing to do is to document your trades and do a, do it and do a, a good solid amount of paper trading so you can kind of find out where you sit in relationship to some of these metrics that we're discussing here. Well, here's, here's our delta, and keep in mind that we wanted to have a probability of success of 70% or higher, which means we're looking for a delta that's at 30 or lower. Remember that the delta is giving us a rough approximation that the option will close in the money, okay? So we're coming down here, and we've got a delta right here. Here's 35. So if we went with the 162.50, we'd be looking at a probability of success of, 60, of 66% because the delta is 34. If we come down here to the delta of 28, 
we have a probability of success of 72%. That meets the metric that we're looking for here because we're playing the part of the investor who would like to have a return of 70, that would like to have a return, we would like to have a probability of success of a return of 70% or higher. So I'm just gonna go ahead and let's see what we can get here in relationship to this. Sometimes you can get a premium that will give you 1% for each day that we're in the trade, but not always. We're playing the part of the investor that wants to get at least 1% for each day that we're in the trade or very something very close to it. So I'm gonna come over here on the 160 and to bring up a short vertical on the Thinkorswim platform. And this is the desktop version of the Thinkorswim platform. You just come down here and you point to the bid price right here, do a right click on that 160, come down here and choose sell and come over here and choose a vertical there. And that brings up our vertical right here. And it looks like we have a credit here of 67 cents. Now, we, 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 we can also see that, the, the, that we have a credit here some, somewhere, in, somewhere in the neighborhood. It looks like this is gonna be fluctuating somewhere between 67 and 65. But also keep in mind that we're talking about the mid here. We may need to come down here in order to get filled. In fact, let's just say for theoretical purposes, we have to come down to 60 cents in for to down to 60 cents in order to get filled. We'll try to get 64, but if we're not able to, let's let's run our numbers here around 60. So what would then the investors, what then would be our theoretical return on risk then if we're looking at a two and a half dollar wide vertical and we're looking at about a six and we're looking about a 60 cent credit? Well, we can do the math on that. Let me pull up a calculator here. Bring that up while that calculator's coming up. Do you want to welcome everybody here? Just looking over here in the chat window. Welcome to Thay and Don and Tom and Rams and, and Zaire and Harry and Jim and Jody and Life of the Fast Lane, Speak the Truth, PR and Doug and everybody else, Greg and Tom and David and everybody else. Great to have everybody here today. Looks like we have Mike Fairborn over there in the chat window as well. Great to have Mike here with us today. Very knowledgeable investor. Do feel free to send your questions over there to Michael. I'll also try to peek over there periodically to see if there's something that I can help out with as well. So here's our calculator. So in determining our return on risk, and this is a theoretical number. We want to keep that in mind because we're not sure exactly where we'll get filled when we exit these positions. Our risk could actually be greater. But from a theoretical standpoint, we'll take the distance between the strike prices, which is 250 here. We'll subtract our credit here of 60, and that will give us our theoretical max, max loss then what we can do is we can take our return and on a short vertical, our maximum return is the credit that we is the credit that we receive when we enter the trade. So we use 60 as that. Let's go ahead and take our 250 here then and subtract our 60. And that's gonna give us 190, I believe. There's our 190. Then we can take our, this is our theoretical max loss. Again, that's just theoretical. We'll take our theoretical max gain, which is the 60. Take 60 here and divide that by the 190, and we'll see what that does here with regards to return on risk. That's given a 31% return on risk for 23 days in the trade. So that meets the metric of getting a 1% return for each day that we're in the trade. We can actually, we could actually possibly explore going even a little bit lower, okay? But I think that'll probably take us out of this. Let's, let's, let's just for fun, let's see if we go a little bit lower here to the 157.50. That would give us a 78% probability of success. Let's just adjust this here and we'll go 157.50, 155. That's gonna be down here. And I just know after doing a few of these that if we drop down below 50, if we drop down below 50 cents, which we are down below here, then we're probably not gonna have our return here of 23% or higher. So let's go back up to where we were at. Yeah, let's take this off of here. We were doing a 160, 157, 50. Right there we go. Okay. All right. So let's 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 see what this looks like on the chart then at 160. We'll come back over here to the chart. And I'm gonna just grab our price. I'm just gonna well, you know, I'm just gonna draw a new price level here. I try to ballpark it here. I'm gonna come all the way out here just so we can differentiate it. And let's put that right at 160 here. That's our short strike price, okay? So there's, there's, there's our short strike price. And notice there's a couple things about our short strike price. One, it's below our theoretical support level right here, which is being challenged. 
Two, it's below the moving average line here, which is which has acted as support in the past. Okay. And then three, it's sitting right on this support level. Okay. So, so, so we've kind of got three areas here that the stock needs to break through in order for this trade to get into trouble. Can that happen? Absolutely, that can happen. In fact, it's happened to us, okay, on more than one occasion. Okay. But that's but that but but that would be one that that would be one situation there. Okay, so we're so, so look at that. That that's going to be A, B, and B. How are we doing on time here? Let me just take a look. Uh, looks like we're doing okay on time. Now, I was I was looking at a secondary stock here. We got A, B, and B here. Um, here is uh, here is Bank of America. Notice on our Bollinger Bands here. Notice the Bollinger squeeze here, and then the breakout. Notice the trend that preceded it was to the downside. Now, because this, because overall this stock is in a downtrend. Now this center line here, this center moving average line, it tends to act as resistance. When we're in an uptrend, it tends to act as support. When we're in the downtrend, it tends to act as resistance. So we've come up here, we've hit that, and we're rolling over and starting to move to the downside. So we could possibly entertain a short call vertical here. Only problem is we have an earnings announcement coming up here that could interfere here, that could interfere from a time frame perspective, okay? Uh, we've got BABA -B -A here. This, these were, this is kind of a sideways trending stock. We're here to look at GE. So this this GE looked look kind of interesting to me this morning. Remember, the, an, another thing to look at with regards to the Bollinger Bands, if the Bollinger Bands are widening out or staying wide, that's an indication the stock is in a, is, is in a strong uptrend, particularly if the stock is staying well off of that center line. So if we look at GE here, this is a different kind of situation. This is a situation where we're actually be playing the bounds rather than assuming that a support level is held up. We can already see that it has held up and we're bouncing and moving to the upside. The Bollinger Bands are widening here. Stock's been well off that center line. These are all signs of strength. We know the strength doesn't continue forever, okay? But we can say, yeah, this, so we can say that from a technical now standpoint, we have a nice strong trend here. So I'm just gonna bring a price level on this thing right here we're looking at a support level this is a proven support level of 172.55 so on ge could we set up a short put vertical down here now the reason we're primarily looking at short put verticals here investors is because that's the trend of the overall market the overall market is in a bullish trend so we're leaning towards trading with the trend of the market okay but we could do some short call verticals. We could do that because there are some downtrending stocks in an uptrending market. But we've opted today just to kind of stay with the overall trend of the market here. Well, looking at 172.55, I'm going to come up here to the trade page and click on trade right here. Here we have GE. Look at 23 days again. Here's our delta. I come down here. We got, we're looking here at 170 as a delta of 24, which means we have a theoretical probability of success of about 76. Okay. Oh, well, let's see what that would look like. I'm going to make a note here on Airbnb. Airbnb was a 160, 157.50, so I don't lose that in case we come back to that. Come over here, let's see what we've got here. I'm going to do a right click here on the 170. I'm going to choose sell and vertical. So here again, we are we are we are two and a half dollars wide, right? And we're looking at a 58 cent credit, we're looking at 170 here. Let's see where 170 looks like on the chart. Go ahead and take a look at the chart. I'm just gonna duplicate this. And I'm gonna change the price on one of those to 170. Okay, so you can see here's support, and here is where our short strike price would be here on GE, okay? And but so so GE GE has a stronger trend. So folks, we've 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 looked at GE and we and we've looked at Airbnb. We've looked at two here. I'm going to run a quick poll and let you decide. Okay, which one of these you'd like to do a short vertical on here today for as an example paper trade? Okay, so well, let me just grab that poll here and send it out here. Okay, and that poll is that poll should be working right now. So, make your vote here, GE, and I'll come back. We'll I'll kind of I'll kind of bounce between the two. Here's GE, here's Airbnb. 
Airbnb and GE. What do you guys think? Air, go with a strong trend, a little tighter here to support, or testing resistance as old support. Okay, we're a little bit further away in relationship to that. So I'm looking over here. It looks like, what do we got here? Well, it looks like GE may have it here. We're sitting here. Okay, I'm going to count down here uh, from 10, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and GE has it. Oh, you know what? I just noticed we've got an earnings announcement here, 423. So we need to stay within the 423. So let's see if we can do that. That earnings announcement may disqualify GE, but let's see. Come back over here to the trade page. And no, it looks like we'd be okay because that, that's going to be 419, right? And the earnings is on 423. Okay, so the so the so the oh, so the majority is GE. So let's go ahead and do GE here, okay? And just to just to run the numbers real quick here, we'll go ahead and try to get 59 here, but we may have to settle for 55. So let's just take a look at our return on risk here on GE. We've got 250 wide. Try that again, 250. That's the distance between our strike prices right here, minus our credit. We'll use, we'll use, uh, I'm, I'm gonna use 53, okay? Minus 53. So our theoretical max loss is 197. So I'm gonna take 53 divided by 197 equals 26, per, equals 26%. We wanna get, we're playing the part of the investor that would like to get 1% free stay there in the trade and have a theoretical probability of success of 70% or higher, okay? So there's GE. Um, let's see our position sizing here then in relationship to that. Um, 197 was our theoretical max loss. Let's say we're okay with $1,000 on this thing, okay? So we'll take 1,000 and divide that by 197. Means we can do five of these, okay? Do five of these guys here on GE, five. We're gonna to try to get filled here at 56, because that'd be great, but if we have to settle for 53 or 54, we ran our numbers based on that, so we'd be okay with that as well. But let's go ahead and try to catch 58 here even. Do a confirm. We want this to go into short vertical sand, and we got filled. Now, investors, this is a, this is a paper money application, okay? So do keep in mind that, that the paper money platform tends to be more forgiving than an actual live trading platform. There's a good possibility if you, if you ran this trade on a live trading platform, you would not get as good of a fill as, you, as, you can, as, we, as we may experience with regards to a paper trading platform. Okay, well, we've got that. Then we, now I may come back in here and do one, on, do, one, do one here on Airbnb as well, depending on time, but we do want to look at our existing positions and see what's going on here in relationship to those. So here is AMAT. We've got 16 days left in the trade. We're looking pretty good here. Our PL's 116. We're currently trading at 205.85. Our short strike price is a 190. So this looks like it is in a pretty good place. Here's GE. That's the trade that we just put on. We have 23 days left. It looks like we've got, we, we're currently looking at a 27.50 loss. That's basically the slippage on the trade most likely in relationship to it. looks like that's bounce around now it's five bucks, okay? Too much about that. Here's Netflix. Netflix, we have one day left on the trade. We're sitting here at 228. Uh, looks like we just did one contract here, but uh, we're sitting here at, right now. Netflix is trading at $618, okay? And our short strike price on Netflix is 575. Now, what I'll, what I'll usually say in here is, okay, what do you think? Should we go ahead and close this out and avoid additional risk? Well, let's, let's look at something else here. Let's look at the delta on the 575 here. And let's go ahead and, and what we'll do is we'll play the part of the investor that's okay letting this expire worthless if the delta on the short leg is at five or less. In other words, there's a 5% or less probability that it could go into the money. If that's the case, We'll play the part of the investor that's okay letting, letting it go through expiration and looking for these options to both expire worthless. We realize that even though this option is out of the money, it still could be assigned and exercised. It's a rare type of a situation, but it is a possibility. But what is our delta on the 575 here on Netflix? Well, let's come up here to um, trade. 
And let's put in Netflix and FLX. And it's right here with one day left. And 575, I need to get all the strikes here so I can find this guy. Here we are down here. Here's our short strike price here. Okay. And the delta is one. Okay. <laughs> so that is so that is at five or below. So we're going to go ahead and play the part of the investor that has this rule to say, you know what? If the delta on my short leg is at five or less, I'm going to go ahead and let them go through expiration. Okay. So we'll go ahead and leave those and look for those to expire worthless, realizing that while it's remote, there's still the possibility that, that short option could be a sign again, remote, but it is a possibility. Okay. So come back over here. We'll look for that to expire with us. And then we have a trade here on PayPal. This has 16 days left till expiration. We're sitting here at 120. It looks like we're getting dinged up here a little bit here today. We're currently trading at 66.45. Our short strike price is sitting here at 60. So it looks like we it looks like we are in okay shape here. Of course, we know that things can deteriorate. All right. I want to make sure on Netflix we don't have an earnings announcement. Coming up here, no, we're okay on an earnings announcement on that. Looks like we're okay on the other ones as well. So investors, just a, a recap with regards to all the trades we've done here. We've been doing these short verticals going back to July of 2020. And up to this point, we, we have completed 198 trades. We've been successful on 81.8% of those trades. We've been unsuccessful on 18.18% of those trades. Overall, and this, this includes our this does include our losing trades. Overall, we've had an average return of six point of sixteen point two six and our average time in the trade has been thirteen point nine days. Again, this is a paper trading account. It tends to be more forgiving than an actual live trading account. OK, so I'm just going to come over here real quick and maybe catch see if there's some questions here that I may be able to help out with. Um, Let's see, so Doug's saying here, GE would look good if not for earnings. Uh, let's take a look here. I didn't know that GE, I didn't know that earnings was a problem there. I want to make sure that we're outside earnings. So here's GE, 423, and our expiration was okay on that, right? Our expiration on GE was sitting here at 419, so it looks like we're okay on that. So we want to double check on that one. All right, and so I got a question there from Greg. What are you using to track our trades? So, so I have a spreadsheet, and we're working right now on being able to being able to share that spreadsheet, with, being able to bring up the spreadsheet and show you a history of all our paper trades. Um, we have done that in the past, but with the conversion, okay, from the legacy situation to the Schwab situation, and that spreadsheet uh, needs that spreadsheet needed to be updated to have the proper naming convention, those types of things. So it just takes a while. Those things come out, but once that spreadsheet's available, once again, I can share it in here, and we can also make it available as a as a downloadable um, journal as well. Okay. Oh, um, again, a big thanks to Mike. Looks like Mike's handling most. Uh, Mike's doing a great job handling your questions here. It looks like you guys got some nice conversation amongst yourself as well. That's always fantastic. All right, investors. Well, you know, we actually have a little bit of time. Should we go ahead and put the trade on on Airbnb as well? We've got some time here. Let's go ahead and come back over here and see what the chart's looking like here on Airbnb. Let's see. A, B, N, B. We've got a little tail here. That's holding up here. Well, think, yeah, why not? Why, why don't we go ahead and we'll pop one here on Airbnb as well? Okay. We're going to come up here to the trade page then. And we're looking at 23. I think we're looking at a 160. Let me melt, that, melt this down a little bit to right here. Yep, there's our delta right there. 73% probability of success. I'm going to do a right click right here and go here and choose cell vertical. So if we got our, we have 58. So we'll go ahead and try to get a fill of 58. We ran. Then we we ran the numbers earlier, okay, in relationship to that. So let's determine our position size here then. Over here and position size. So we've got our $250 wide. We're looking to get a credit here. I'm gonna I'm gonna use 55 in case we have to go down here to get 55. 
minus 55 credits. We got about 195. Looks like it's going to be about the same as the other one, right? We want to risk a thousand bucks. We'll divide that by our theoretical maximum loss of 195. That puts us at five contracts here once again. So we'll come down here to five contracts. Why don't we take a look at this? We've got a little bit of time here. Why don't we take a look at this on the Analyze tab just to see what it looks like on the Analyze tab. So again, I'm on the Thinkorswim desktop. And to bring this trade over to the Analyze tab, I just do a right click on it and choose Analyze Trade. And that brings it over here to the Analyze page. I'm going to come over here and select Risk Profile under Analyze Page. And this is typical of a short vertical. Notice on a short vertical that this is our theoretical risk right there. This is our theoretical gain right there. This is zero, okay? So you can see that we're risking a lot, we're, we're risking a lot more than we stand to gain. But why would we be willing to do that? Because this is the existing price of stock right here. And you'll notice that the stock can go down and we can still be profitable. The stock can go up and we can still be profitable. It can go up as high as it wants to go up. And from a theoretical standpoint, will be profitable. It has a fair amount of room to go down. You saw that on the, on the chart. <clears throat> if it does go down here and starts to break down here, there are some things that we can do to manage the trade, okay? But the reason someone would be okay looking at a possible trade right here is because of the theoretical probability of success. We can, over here on the Analyze page, we can look at those probabilities by coming over here and clicking on this menu down here where it says Price Slices. Click on that and say Set Slices to Break Even and then choose the expiration date of the option. There's our expiration date. And then have this date down here set to today's date. And then this date up here set to the expiration date which is April 19th. We're here in April 19th. Okay, so we've got that done. You see, so this is given us on, so this is on the Analyze page, and it's giving us a theoretical probability of success of 68.4%. Now you may look at that and say, wait a minute, Ken, we were looking at 70%. So, do, so, so keep in mind that the Analyze page doesn't always agree exactly with the delta. It, 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 it has some other metrics. And perhaps you may say, you know what? I want my trades to show 70% probability of success on the analyst page. That's fine, you know? <laughs> there, there, is, there, is, there is nothing wrong with that. We've been okay using the delta, but also checking the analyst page. But if, you, but if you want the analyst page here as well, yeah, then that would just involve going further out of the money in order to move this up to, this, in order to move this up, up to 70. Let me come over here and... Yeah, so so you can do that as well. But a very nice tool here. This is one of the this is one of the strengths of the Thinkorswim platform is the analysis you can do here with regards to different types of option strategies and different types of configurations as well. All right, investors. Well, let me come back over here and check for any additional questions we may have here to see. Then we'll go ahead and sign off here for today. Um, And it looks like you guys are doing a great job over there. And look, look, looks like we're in good shape. Well, let's tell you what, let's let's go ahead and wrap things up here a little bit early here today. I think what are we about three or four minutes early? Um, we'll take one more look out here at the markets before we check off here. We'll come over here and see what's going on with the SP. Still have our red candle here, so we got a bounce, but we do have a red candle there. NASDAQ, yeah, that's a little bit more bearish. How about the Russell? The Russell has given us more of a strong. Uh, more of a strong pullback and a bounce right there on the Russell. In fact, I was kind of looking at things here on the Russell. You know, we may want to look at some small cap stocks, the trade options, and possibly some financial stocks as well, because the Russell is made up of a fair amount of regional banks. In fact, just for fun, let's take a look at one regional bank that's pretty close to where I live. That's Zions. And you can see Zion's pull back and bounce, sort of in a sideways trend, pulling back, and it is bouncing, moving up here to the upside. Not, not too much of a surprise because of what we're currently seeing here with the Russell, okay? All right, investors, so let's go ahead and wrap stuff up here for today then, okay? See how we did.
So what did we talk about here today? Well, we, we talked about short verticals. We talked about important numbers, important numbers and considerations. We looked at return on risk, looked at probabilities related to that. We looked at some of the, we, we talked about stock selection. Again, just a little bit of a heads up, bottom of the YouTube window, click on more. There will be a, a there will be some links in there. One of those links will be build, how to build an option traders watch list. I'd encourage you to, if you haven't already to view that so that you can build your own watch list, go through the same steps that we did, only, only make it your own, okay? So check that out. Also, while we're talking about the YouTube window, if you look at the bottom right-hand corner, there's a subscribe button there. If you if you are not already subscribed, by all means hit that subscribe button. That just helps you to keep up with the latest and the greatest that's available from the Trader Talks Network. And there are literally over one hundred thousand folks out there that are currently subscribed. So join the party. All right. <laughs> and then we we followed steps that we that that that, that we customarily do in here with regards to putting a trade. Okay. Hey, just a little reminder, um, you can follow me on X, formerly Twitter. My X handle is at Ken Rose CS. I'd also encourage you to follow Mike on X as well. He posts a lot of great information over there. Also, Mike teaches an excellent cover calls and short puts, and I believe that's on Mondays, Mike, if I'm not mistaken. If you want to send that over in the chat window so folks know when that is, I'm sure that they would, be, they would greatly appreciate that. All right, everybody. Well, hey, thanks again for joining us here today. For short verticals, hope you have a great afternoon and evening and a wonderful, fantastic rest of your week. I also hope to see you back here again next time. And we'll take a look to see how our trades on Airbnb and General Electric have fared, as well as our other existing positions. So bye, everybody. Thanks again, and we'll catch you later.